When I originally watched Toy Story, and the concept of the Buzz Lightyear action figure was presented, I was always kind of interested in what could spark such a almost minor phenomenon to a certain extent. Because initially it seemed like it was kind of like a minor thing. It was mostly just the toy tie-ins that made it so big. But then you get to other movies and it seemed like Buzz Lightyear was even bigger than you initially could have even thought. But my focus was always on that first movie where you had Andy get the Buzz Lightyear doll and he was like, oh man, that's so cool. And then, you know, he played with it for probably like a week or a month straight. And then it was just kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, it's whatever at this point. You know, like an actual kid. And I was always interested in what was the Buzz Lightyear series that could get Andy's Jimmy's in such a rustle for a good long while before he eventually lo lost interest for the most part. Not lost interest, lost interest, but it wasn't the newest hotness for the most part. And then we got the movie, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, The Adventure Begins. And whereas I know a l good amount of people weren't the biggest on this series, I remember loving that movie to death. I was so intrigued because you got to see Buzz Lightyear in his actual natural element, at actual Star Command, taking orders, going on missions, the idea of him having this partner, Warp Dark Matter, who dies in the line of duty or so you think, and just seeing evil Emperor Zurg as an actual antagonist. And I ate it up. Like, something about this premise, this idea, just really connected with me on a level I was just not ready for. And maybe it was because this series was also created by the same people who created Kim Possible. Both of the same people, Mark McCorkle and Bob Schooley, they worked on Kim Possible not long after this was done. And there was just that same level of cleverness, that same level of fun, lightheartedness. You can see so much of the snarkiness of Draken in Zerg. And, spoiler alert, when you find out Warp Dark Matter, he even calls it out. It's just like, my name's Dark Matter. Come on, man. You find out that he's evil. It's just, he feels like Shigo prototype. The snarky nature of how he interacts with Zerg and all that. And the idea of Buzz getting these kind of new partners in the form of Mira Nova, who, you know, voiced by Nicole Sullivan, and I, I wonder how she got the voice acting role of Shigo, and it went so far. Like, Mira Nova was such a fun character. The, the standard kind of trope at this point of the princess who wants to prove herself in combat and show that she's not just some damsel in distress and all that. But Mira Nova was smart. She had a good head on her shoulders. She was a fun enough character. It was almost like they were kind of trying to make a Princess Leia-esque character. Yeah, yeah, she was kind of sexy, but at the same time, she was a badass with a blaster and she was highly capable. And for the bumbling kind of guy, of course you had Boost who I loved Booster. He was a fun guy. Yes, he was a little bit clumsy, but he always wanted to be a space ranger. And then he got the opportunity to become a ranger, and he is living the dream. And I'm just like, dude, live your truth. Do it, man. Become the space ranger you always wanted to be. And I love when Booster is just nerding out about being partners with Buzz Lightyear and his encyclopedic knowledge of everything Buzz has ever done. It's actually kind of cute. And dude, XR. I loved XR. He was the goof, he was the screwball, an experimental space ranger created by the LGMs, the Little Green Men. I also love the LGMs in this series. It's just, they're, they're so fun. But he was created when they were a little bit 
off for the most part. And so he's kind of off, but he's also just loads of fun. And he has all these gadgets and attachments. He kind of felt like a mix of Darkwing Duck and Gizmo Duck just combined into one person. The ego and the gadget. Just so much fun as a character. And it had a solid run. Yeah, it was only one season, but it was 65 episodes. For most series, that's at least around two seasons to a certain extent. Maybe, maybe even three, depending on what your standards are. But it was just, it was just fun. Fun space adventures. Honestly, I felt like the series ran longer than it actually did. But it was scripted for instant syndication you hit that 65 episode mark it's just like okay and now we just do reruns at nauseum till the end of time and i love watching those reruns i would always tune in for an episode of buzz lightyear just fun space adventures that was the name of the game and they played it well and dude Buzz being voiced by Patrick Warburton, since, I mean, it's an animated series, of course Tim Allen wouldn't be involved in it for the long haul, but, I mean, Patrick Warburton brought it. I mean, it's Patrick friggin' Warburton. Like, dude, this series was better than it had any right to be, and I feel like it honestly could have gone just a little bit longer if it was allowed to. But I think Disney only wanted like an almost kind of proof of concept to have something out there, you know, get it in, get out and go on with their lives. And well, they did it. But I really do feel like they could have done more with this series if they had thought about it. Hell, put it on a better programming block. I think you would have done wonders. But uh, the world will never know. But tell me, did you watch Buzz Lightyear of Star Command? Did you even know this series actually existed? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications. And until next time, I've been News This Then, and I will see you later. Bye bye <laughs>